So you're still locked down to some degree. You're still spending a lot of time at home. That's okay, I've got you covered because I have some book suggestions this month on That Deacon on YouTube. Hello and welcome back. Before we get into the books, I'd like to plug my secondary channel. If you remember, uh, back during Lent, I decided to create six Compline online services designed using YouTube as the uh, model. Well, I've been furloughed and I have a lot of extra time on my hands. So what I decided to do was to keep going. And my goal is to create 52 services, one for each week of the year. So I suggest you go to the other channel, subscribe like you subscribe to this one. And each time I upload a Compline, you can pray it before you go to bed. So here we are. We've got four books for you, or I have four books for you. They're all here to help you grow in maturity in your faith. Um, these books are mostly easy to read. They are not uh, seminary textbooks. Anyone can buy them. Uh, they're not new. Uh, the newest book I have here is uh, the Richard Rohr book, and that's even a little bit of an older book of his. So they should be affordable. You could probably buy them used. Um, I'm going to leave the author's names and the book title. Where you buy them is up to you. So I'm not going to uh, suggest where you purchase the books, but I think they're a great addition to your library. Now, the first book I have for you is by John Dominic Crossan. It's entitled, In Search of Paul, how Jesus' apostle opposed Rome's empire with the kingdom of God or God's kingdom, as he has written on the cover here or as publishers have. This is a most excellent book. Um, if you've ever listened to Cross and Speak, he oftentimes talks about the metrics. And the matrix is pulling together not only context, that's only one small area of his interest. He pulls together archaeology, sociology. He looks at the situation in life. He digs into the archaeology of the text itself. And you find out that Paul is not as confusing as you think he was. And he's not a schizophrenic. Um, I remember when <laughs> I was uh, in my 20s and getting back into the Bible, I was totally convinced that Paul needed to see a psychiatrist because one paragraph he would be all lovey-dovey and then the next paragraph down he would shout, you fools, you idiots. Uh, I didn't know what was going on, and this book will explain it to you. So he's going to unmask and show you the true Paul. And when you find out he really is cool and stood up against many of the social norms of his day and was actually quite supportive of women. Now, if an, isn't that something to uh, at least check out the book? Excellent scholarship. It's uh, dense, 
but Crossan writes so well that uh, you should be able to understand it. He uh, also wrote this with Jonathan L. Reed, who I believe is an archaeologist. So this is an excellent book to pick up. Now, speaking of people, the second book I have here is not that big, but it really gives you an excellent look at Mary. One of the things that uh, I always found uncomfortable for me was that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was always portrayed as this very weak, docile, quiet person. And uh, Elizabeth A. Johnson, uh, the author of The She Who Is, uh, wrote this book. It's entitled Dangerous Memories, A Mosaic of Mary in Scripture. Um, it's an excellent book that will get you all hyped and become a fan of Mary. This book is written by Elizabeth A. Johnson, uh, a theologian, a feminist theologian, and a nun. Um, she is wonderful. This book is easy to read. It's dense, again, but it's written for everyone. It's not written for seminary students. And I think it will give you a new, fresh look at Mary and give you a better appreciation for this wonderful woman. Before I go on to the other two books, uh, I'd like to do another plug. Uh, as I had previously mentioned, uh, I was put on um, my furlough around the 23rd of April. And uh, then I had to go into uh, the state system uh, to gain unemployment insurance and get into that loop. And I knew there would be a time where I would be in limbo before all of that got through. Luckily, I heard about a particular program uh, put on by the National Association of Deacons, and it was, it's called the Fund for the Diaconate. And with many of us deacons unemployed at this time, uh, many working uh, during the day at different jobs, other people have been put on furlough. And they have some money that was set aside to help deacons during this time when we are all unemployed. I applied and uh, was given um, some funds from that. Now my uh, state uh, unemployment insurance has kicked in and everything's fine. I won't need it anymore. But thank God that that fund was available. I'd like to thank uh, the National Association of Deacons and the Fund for the Diaconate for their uh, help during this time. I also would like to ask you, if you feel it in your heart, uh, if you would like to donate some money to the Fund for the Diaconate, I will leave that link below. It will take you to their website and then uh, either now or later when your uh, money situation becomes more abundant, you might think about contributing to this fund. As you know, and I'm sure you might be aware, traditionally, the ministry of the deacon is not compensated monetarily. So they do a lot of their work as part of their ministry they offer to the church while they work out in the world. And so there are particular times when deacons might get sick or they might have some financial difficulties. It's nice to have this fund available and you can help fund this. So either now or in the future, just think about donated to the Fund for the Diaconate and all of your fellow deacons that hopefully serve you uh, will be 
very much appreciative of your generosity. The uh, third book I would like to mention is by Father Richard Rohr, and I've mentioned him before on this channel, a wonderful writer. He wrote this with Mike Morell, uh, another theologian, and uh, Mike, uh, with a foreword by William Paul Young, the author of The Shack. It is called The Divine Dance, and it's a look at the Trinity. The Trinity is one of those things that is part of the church, but uh, really, if the Trinity was not even mentioned, probably 90% of the church as we know it would go on fine without it. But the Trinity is very, very important. I can highly recommend this book, The Divine Dance by Richard Rohr. Excellent book. And lastly, uh, another book that will help you uh, think about your faith uh, is the very last book written by Marcus Borg, and it's entitled Convictions. He talks about his path, of where he began in his understanding of faith, and where he ended up, and takes you on this intellectual journey of how he got there. So, um, I would really, really highly recommend this. If you've read Marcus Borg before, uh, he, is, uh, he has a way of taking complex issues and theology and making them understood by all. So those are my suggestions uh, for you. Um, the Paul book will take you a while, so it should keep you busy. I will list all of these books down below, and I hope you find them and read them. Otherwise, that's all I have for you this month. I hope you are well. I hope your family is safe. If you do enter the world again, depending upon where you live, be smart about it, please. Uh, continue to use face coverings uh, until maybe we start to see a glimmer of hope of a vaccine. Uh, just be smart, be loving, and be kind to the people you meet out and about because that is our goal as followers of Christ, to let that compassion for others shine through, not only with what we know, but how we live our lives. And next month, I'll see you again on That Deacon on YouTube. Bye-bye.